this video is meant to show you some of the options on the new musical sequence dialog in the Lightorama Sequence Editor. We won't show all of the options in this video, some of them will be in other videos. In this video we're concerned with the options that are related to the channels in the new sequence. For example, how many channels will be in the new sequence and how those channels are set up. So let's go to the New button and then select New Musical Sequence and OK. Select the song file that we'll use for this sequence. And here's the new musical sequence options dialog. So for this particular video, we're concerned with the options in this, set, uh, this section, channel setup. So at first, uh, by default, it's set up so that we'll select a channel count, eight channels, using standard LOR controllers. Let's click on OK and see what all of that means. So here's the new sequence. First thing you'll notice is that there are indeed eight channels, unit 01.1 to unit 01.8. And if we click on any one of these buttons, channel buttons, to show the channel settings for that particular channel, we'll see that this one, for example, is a Lightorama controller on the regular network, unit 01, circuit 1, and it goes down to unit 01, circuit 8. And the reason there are eight channels is because we specified that on the new musical sequence dialog. And the reason that they're already set up as Lightorama controllers, starting at unit 01.1 and going up from there, is because we selected the option using standard Lightorama controllers. So let's close out of here and modify those a little bit to see what will happen if we change them. Start up another new musical sequence. And now instead of eight channels, let's say that you have two Lightorama controllers. In other words, two boxes, each with a bunch of plugs hanging off of them, that you can plug lights into each of those plugs. Uh, on each of those two boxes, two controllers, there are 16 plugs, typically. Um, so each one of those two boxes can handle 16 different strings of lights. Each one of those strings of lights is essentially a channel. So you have two of the controllers, 16 circuits each. So let's change number of channels used from 8 to 32. Click on OK. And it creates a new sequence, but this time it has a bunch more sequence, a bunch more channels. And if you scroll down to see them all and count them all up, you'll see that in fact there are 32 of them, just like we specified. And because the typical Lightorama controller has 16 circuits on it, in other words, 16 plugs that you can plug lights into, it starts off at unit 01.1 and goes down to unit 01.16 and then it starts over at unit 02.1. In other words, these channels up at the top are channels on your first controller, unit 01, and these channels down at the bottom are channels on your second controller, unit 02.1. If we click on one of the channels down here, let's say unit 02.8, to see its channel settings, you'll see it is also unit, uh, also a Lightorama controller on the regular network, but it's unit 02, circuit 8. We close out of here again and try everything out again. New musical sequence. And uncheck this using standard LOR controllers. Let's leave this at 8 for now. Doesn't really matter. Let's uncheck this using standard LOR controllers and click OK. There are eight channels, just like we specified, but they're no longer named unit 01.1 through unit 01.8. They're just channel 1, channel 2, up to channel 8. If you click on one of them, you'll see all of this information in here. It used to be automatically populated as the Lightorama controller on the regular network, and then various units and circuits. And that was because of that use standard Lightorama controllers option. When we unchecked that option, it no longer automatically populates this, so we would have to populate it manually. Maybe this particular channel represents a dasher controller, unit 4, or circuit 5, or something. And we could do that for all of these channels, but it would probably be a bit of a pain, and in many situations the option to use standard LOR controllers will uh, be good for your setup. Now let's close out of here again. Start up another new musical sequence.
And now let's concern ourselves with this option, use a save channel configuration template. But I haven't told you what a save channel configuration template is, so instead of actually using this option right now, let's still use the first option and then create a channel configuration template. That way you can see what it really is, and then I'll go back again and we'll use it later. So let's use all of these defaults for now. And uh, Again, there are eight controllers, or eight channels, I'm sorry, and there are unit 01.1 down to unit 01.8. And if I turn all of them on, and that's using this on tool here, you'll see they all become blue, and that's because in their channel settings, they're all set up to be this blue color. But maybe this particular guy is actually red. And he's our front bushes, so let's name them front bushes. And even though he used to be named Unit 01.3, and now he's not, he's still going to control Circuit 3 on Unit 01, because the name doesn't affect what it actually controls. The name is just for your informational purposes. So you can name him anything you want. This is the part that actually control, uh, determines what lights he will control. So let's click on OK. You'll see his name has changed to Front Bushes, and his color has become red. Maybe this one is a snowman, and the snowman is white. He's now white and a snowman. And maybe I have another channel as well. Uh, maybe I have, for example, an X10 channel. So I'll insert a channel below. Here this new channel has been created. Let's turn him on as well. By default, he's the same blue as always. Let's click on his channel settings, and let's say he's our roof line and the lights on our roof line are green. They're controlled by an X10 controller on unit A7. Click on OK. He's roof line and he's green. And now you can make all of these changes uh, manually like I just did, but let's say that you have you know a dozen different songs in your show. You don't want to do that for every single sequence. It would be uh, a hassle, and it would also be error prone. So instead, once you have a sequence set up the way you want it with respect to channel settings, such as the name and circuit and color and so forth, you can export all of that information into a channel configuration file by going to the edit menu, export import channel configuration, export channel configuration. Then select the name of a channel configuration file to save it to. Let's say that the, this uh, particular channel configuration is the way that I have my lights set up for my 2012 Christmas show. And save it. Now I'll exit out of this sequence and start up yet another new musical sequence. And this time... I'll use the use a saved channel configuration template. When I click on that, that enables this button, which if we'll click here, opens up a file browser asking us to select a channel configuration file to use. This is the one that I just created, so let's use that and click OK. And now it creates a sequence with nine channels, just like we had in the other sequence with the names being unit 01.1 and so forth, down to front bushes and snowman and roofline. If we turn all of these channels on, you'll see the colors of the ones that I changed are the same as they were in the other sequence. You click on one of the buttons to open up channel settings. You'll see that the actual device type and unit and so forth are the same as they were in the other sequence. For example, this roofline one is an X10 device, unit A7. So, Channel configuration files can really make it a lot easier and a lot less error-prone if you're intending to use multiple sequences that have the same channel setups in each of them. So I guess that's it for this video. I hope that helped.